Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomachev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. Man, what a week this was. It was a Psycho MVP Summit week, Symposium week, a whole week of knowledge dropping. <laughs> Um, it was definitely great to uh, great to meet a lot of the new people and catch up with the old friends. Uh, definitely thanks to everyone who stopped by our booth and came to our Psycho Commerce session. And by the way, if you're interested in a full demo of the website, what we showed during the presentation was just a small sub subset of features. If you'd like to see the whole experience, which is actually pretty cool, um, market basket analysis, the um, the geo analysis, the demographic analysis that we um, that we've done and connected, and integrated with this website are really cool. So if you'd like to see the whole thing, it takes about an hour, an hour and a half to walk through the whole experience. Uh, reach out to me, and I'll I'll be happy to set that up for you. So again, great week, uh, Psycho Commerce at the forefront of the Psycho Symposium. Uh, lots of new features coming to Psychor.net Core. I was very excited to hear where Sitecore was uh, with that. Um, XConnect, integration, uh, external um, data source integration frameworks, lots and lots of information. So uh, definitely a, a great and very informative week. So back to this <laughs> episode. So here uh, today I'd like to talk to you about validation, Sitecore validation. And I like to think of validation in Psycho projects in three layers. So the first layer is um, the layer of help information, the help messages on fields and items. Even though uh, it doesn't enforce or does it can't prevent um, users from entering wrong information, it's your first line of defense as a developer. By uh, using help information, we can sort of guide users and give users examples and show, tell them what kind of data should and should not go into these fields. So the second line of defense is the site core item or field validation. This is what I'd like to talk to you about in this episode. And the third line uh, of validation is, of course, our code. Now, as good site core developers, we should always follow the uh, separation of concerns principle and validate data that comes from, from an external data source. In this case, it's Sitecore. Why? Well, today it's Sitecore. Tomorrow, someone could introduce through dependency injection another data source in addition to Sitecore. And who knows what kind of validation, what kind of data lives there, right? So it's better be safe than sorry. <laughs> so let's take a look at Sitecore validation. So Sitecore has a couple of types of validation rules, uh, field validation rules and item validation rules. You can find them by navigating to Sitecore System Settings Validation Rules folder. And here you can see you'll find the field rules, item rules folders, they speak for themselves. Global rules item, now these rules apply across the board to all content items in Sitecore. And the light sensor is trying to kick me out. So it's important important to note this item because, like I said, it applies to all content. Um, so if you have multiple websites running on the site, for instance, it'll apply to all of the websites. Now, of course, field rules can only be applied to fields, and item rules can only be applied to items. Now, Sitecore comes with a pretty good set of default rules. And if uh, you click on a rule definition item, you'll see the title description. So you can change this, you can customize it, uh, add more information to it to make it more descriptive. But I find what comes with default Sitecore rules is pretty, uh, pretty descriptive and uh, sufficient. Now, there is a way to, that you can create your own custom rules. So if you uh, don't find that Sitecore rules provide enough validation for you or enough flexibility, you can create your own. Now make sure that the regex uh, validator is not going to work for you. I find that a lot of developers jump to creating their own. Um, however, um, sometimes uh, what they try to reinvent the wheel and they could have really reused the regex validator instead of creating their custom one. So make sure you do your proper checking before you jump into development, jump the gun. 
So, but to create your own rule, if you do find yourself in that situation, is very easy. So you just simply duplicate one of the rules, modify the content, of course, the title, the message, point it to the type that implements your validator. And there are multiple blog articles written about custom validators. Uh, you can either refer to those or break out a decompiler and take a look at how, how Sitecore does it. Just navigate to this namespace and that type. Uh, now, parameters field is uh, something that we can use to pass parameters to the validator class. Now, this is a very interesting field for um, one reason, uh, is that Sitecore validators can accept uh, severity types as parameters. And there's a, a really good article written on that. Uh, let's see. I think by Brian Pearson. Let's see. Sitecore validator. Data warning critical error. Whoa, if I could spell correctly. Let's see, Cycro using Cycro field validators. I think that's the one. Yep, that's the one. So here, as you can see, we have several severity levels in Cycro validators, which control Cycro behavior. Uh, what, uh, what, that occurs when uh, a certain rule fails. So let's, for instance, compare an error with a fatal error, or a critical error with a fatal error. So the when a uh, critical error occurs, you get a, in addition to all the visual cues in the quick action bar, or the validator bar, um, validator button, validation, um, or the workflow, uh, Sekiro will also give you a notification. So it'll you'll get a pop-up. It's a model pop-up that'll tell you that there are errors um, on this item. Uh, before saving the item. So you can choose to uh, ignore the message, um, you can hit cancel and fix it, or you can just hit OK and proceed with the error. Now, a fatal error will not allow you to save your content at all. So as you can see, these are these can come in very useful. So if, uh, some of the rigid validation um, rules should definitely use fatal errors, while some of the more suggestive um, should use suggestion or, or warning type of severity. All right, so these are our uh, custom rules. So let's take a look at how we can apply them. So there are several places where you can apply rules uh, to an item. So you can apply validation rules to all the items created from a given template. And you can do that on the standard values of the data definition template or you can do it uh, directly on an item. Uh, let's say, or you can really mix and match. You could uh, define uh, define default validation rules on the template and then override them directly on certain items. Now, how do we do that? So I'll use the bookmark field list to quickly jump to the validation section. There we go. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five fields here. So these five, five fields control where the validation failure queues uh, uh, appear in the Sitecore client interface, so in um, content editor. So the quick action bar is the bar over on the right. Right here you see there is a, a green square currently there. So there are that means there are no validation errors. So if there was an error, you would see a red square here. The validation uh, button validation rules. Those are the rules that fire when you click the validation button. Oops, let's see, this guy right here. So as you can see we have one failure. It's not proper XHTML. Now where are these rules coming from if all these fields are empty? Remember the global rules item under the settings? So that's, uh, that's kind of a quick gotcha. I always get that question. Then the validation bar rules. Uh, the validation bar is the bar that appears to the left of the field. So if a uh, field has an error, you'll see a red uh, vertical line to the left of the field. And the workflow validation rules, of course, the rules that uh, gets checked during the workflow validation action. And up, uh, last field on an item. This field actually doesn't exist. On f in the field validation section is we can actually suppress some of the validation rules in this field. Uh, for instance, the ones coming from the template. 
So this is how to apply validation rules to an item. And of course, when you click the edit button, it takes you directly to the item rules. So in this case, you can't really shoot yourself in the foot and apply field rules to, an I to item rules, which is nice. Now, to uh, apply validation to fields, we have to go to our template, our data definition template, and we have to navigate to the field we'd like to apply rules to. Let me maximize this. Here we go. So we're on a title field. Let's use our bookmark to jump to the validation section again. Where'd it go? Here. As you notice, it uses different type of field um, uh, from the item validation rule section. However, it carries the same meaning. So here we would simply select the rules that we like to be applied to an item. So by default, as you can see, we have actually a few rules applied here. We have uh, required, 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 validation bar. So as you can see in validation bar, we have an extra validation for the length. Okay, so this is a great thing about site core validation. It allows you, uh, gives you flexibility um, about where to display validation warnings. Now, one thing that you may want to keep uh, in mind if you're experiencing performance issues with your content editor, it might be a good idea to apply certain rules only in one place. Uh, the most obvious place where authors can spot the failures. So for instance, the max length here in the validation bar is probably um, one of the best places to, to do that. The more validation rules you add to all of these sections, uh, the more processing power the content editor will require. Therefore, if you're already having issues, it might slow, slow down even further. So keep that in mind um, before going to town and just dropping everything and enabling all the validation keys everywhere across the content editor. So let's take a look at what a validation failure looks like. So it looks like uh, we have a required uh, validator applied to the title field. So if we were to erase this value, we should get a failure, and we did. So notice the vertical bar to the left of the field. So this is our validation bar. If you hover over it, just, just get it just right over the bar, you'll see a, a tooltip that um, gives you a hint uh, about the failure. Now this text comes from the rule definition under the settings. Now if you notice over on the right, we have now a red square, a little red square, uh, and if you hover over it, you get the same tooltip. Now this is our quick action bar. Let's go ahead and save it. Now notice the warning that I got. So this is a critical error. Just remember the, the severity levels. So the, the critical error gives us a warning message. That's the default. And let's take a look at the failure in the validation. Well, we kind of already seen it with the XHTML validation failure. However, we should now have a new one. There it is, uh, field title must contain a value. So this is um, what a uh, validation button failure looks like. And the workflow failure uh, you would see during the validation um, action of, uh, if it's specified in, in your workflow. So there you go. This is Cycro Validation. Now there, is, there are lots of benefits to using it. Uh, you know, simply from um, preventing your users uh, uh, entering information. So from and the light sensor is trying to kick me out again. Um, preventing users from breaking the website, uh, breaking the page, um, from simple styling corruptions to, uh, you know, completely breaking the web page or the website, depending on how the value of the field is used, uh, to uh, simple usability of the Cycro content editor. Uh, remember, we as developers uh, are responsible not only for providing or delivering a great website experience, but also a great uh, and um, streamlined content editing experience. So that's why I want to always uh, fill out the help information, add validation, and also uh, add validation in or and in code. So that ensures that the website looks great. In theory, ideally, there's nothing that content authors um, 
could enter in the fields in Sitecore that would break the website due to our code validation and the Sitecore validation. Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. So based on your scope um, and the amount of work, the amount of time you have, you can mix and match. So ideally, you'd, you'd have it, of course, in both places. But applying Sitecore validation also uh, streamlines the content authoring process. So instead of, for instance, an author entering a wrong value, then checking uh, the page and seeing it broken, to simply entering a wrong value and seeing validation live. As you saw, as soon as I erased the value, the validation error showed up. Now, let me go ahead and put that back in. And you see the validation bar goes away without me even saving it. So users get immediate feedback as they um, fill, out, uh, fill out the content or modify content in Sitecore. So hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, give me a thumbs up. Um, again, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com. And I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.